Hello everybody and welcome to my new SQL Server Quickie. In my last Quickie I have talked about the nested loop operator in SQL Server and today we will continue this discussion by introducing the hash join operator to you. The hash join is used by SQL Server if you are joining big unindexed tables together. The hash join is a very good candidate for data warehouse scenarios, but if you are dealing with a pure OLDB environment, you don't really want to see a hash join. A hash join in an execution plan is always a sign that you could have some problems with your indexing strategy. Because SQL Server is reading a lot of data from your storage and has to perform the join through the hash join. When you are dealing with a hash join in an execution plan, you will always need a so-called memory grant for the hash table that is internally built by the hash join operator. If your statistics are inaccurate or out of date, it can be the case that the memory grant is too small and SQL Server has to spill your hash join to TempDB. This means that physical I.O. is involved with your join operator. Let's switch now over to the flip chart where I'm describing the hash join in more detail to you. I want to show you now on the flip chart how a hash join is performed within SQL Server. As you can see, we have again two tables, table A, table B, and both tables are joined now with a hash join. When we look on our execution plan, we have table A, we have table B, and both tables are joined together by a hash join, and the result goes to another operator and to in the execution plan as our select operator. The hash join itself consists of two phases. The first phase is the so-called build phase, and the second phase is the so-called probe phase. In the build phase, SQL Server is doing the following. SQL Server takes the input of our outer table and creates a hash table. When we're creating a hash table, we need a hash function. Which hash function SQL Server is using here is just undocumented. In our case, we are assuming a very simple hash function. We are just dividing our records by even and odd numbers. As you can see, we have a 1 with value of 3, uneven, value of 5, uneven, value of 2 is even, value of 1, we have it already here, this is a so-called hash collision, value of 6, value of 8, and value of 7, uneven. So what we have here are so-called hash buckets. That's the first phase. During the first phase, during the build phase, SQL Server is not emitting any record through the hash join. It's also the reason why that hash join is called a stop and go operator. We are stopping in the first phase, in the build phase, and SQL Server is only emitting records to the upstream operator in the execution plan during the build, during the probe phase. So in the second phase, we are taking our second table, table B, and we are probing against the hash table that we have built. With a value of 3, uneven, so we are probing the uneven hash bucket. As you can see, we have a matching record. We are emitting that record. Value of 1, we have a result. Value of 2, even value, we are probing the other hash bucket, emitting the value of 2 value of 5, uneven, value of 3, value of 7, with also a match value of 1, and as you can see, the last value, value of 4, we are proving the even hash bucket, as you can see, we have no matching records, so this is the result set that the hash join emits during the probe phase to the upstream operator, in our case the select operator. Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio where we, look, where we will look in more details on the hash join and 
some side effects like a hash spill. In the first step of this demo, I want to show you with a simple example how a hash join works in SQL Server. I'm running here a join between the table person and person phone of the AdventureWorks 2012 database. As you can see from the execution plan, a hash join operator was chosen by the query optimizer. The table person phone was used by SQL Server as the outer table to produce the hash table itself. And afterwards, the created hash table was probed by the second table person to produce matching records. You can also see on which columns the probing was done by looking at the tooltip window and the property hash keys probe. When you finally move your mouse over the select operator, at the beginning of the execution plan, you can also see that SQL Server needed to request a memory grant of 8.5 megabytes for that query. That memory grant must be granted to the query before the query itself can start. In the next step, I want to show you with another example, how inaccurate statistics can lead to a hash spill in SQL Server. As you have seen by now, a hash join has to acquire a memory grant. That memory is used to create the needed hash table in memory. But if too less memory was granted, for example, when your statistics are inaccurate, then the hash table would overflow and the memory would overflow the memory grant and SQL Server has to spill the hash table to DampDB. This means that the hash join finally needs physical I.O. to perform his work and the performance of the query will suffer. Let's have a look on a simple example. I have here a query in front of me which performs in another database a join between two tables. I have also used here the query hint hash so that SQL Server is really performing a hash join in the execution plan. I have also SQL Server profiler running and configured a trace that collects the hash warning event. That event is raised by SQL Server as soon as a hash join is spilled over to DampDB. Let's run this trace now. When we execute our query, you will see that this query takes some time and that SQL Server profiler shows you multiple events. This means now that our hash join was spilled over to DampDB and that physical I.O. was involved in that specific query. When we have a more detailed look on the execution plan, you can see an exclamation mark at the hash join. The exclamation mark means that this join was spilled over to DampDB. The showing of the exclamation mark during a spill operation is a new feature in SQL Server 2012. It's not available in previous versions of SQL Server. When we hover over the stream of records that are coming to the outer table of the hash join, you can see that SQL Server estimates just one row. But in reality, we are getting here 800 rows. SQL Server misestimates here the number of rows because the non clustered index seek operator on the right hand side is based on old, out of date statistics. For that reason, the cardinality misestimation is flowing from operator to operator until we hit DampDB at the hash join operator. When you have a more detailed look on the select operator, you can also see that SQL Server requests a memory grant of 1 megabyte here. SQL Server is requesting this memory grant under the assumption that the hash join process processes only one row. But in reality, we are processing 800 rows. Therefore, we encounter the spill to DampDB. That's one of the negative side effects of inaccurate statistics in combination with the hash join. How can we fix that specific problem? We can fix it by updating our statistics with a full scan, as you can see in the next step. When we now run our query again, 
SQL Server will recompile our whole execution plan because the statistics were recalculated and finally SQL Server is able to estimate the correct size of the memory grant. When you look after the query execution at the select operator, you can see that SQL Server has now requested a memory grant of 8.5 megabytes. It's much larger than previously. Therefore, SQL Server is able to perform the whole hash join in memory instead of going to DampDB. You can also see that SQL Server has chosen now a clustered index scan operator on the right side of the execution plan instead of the bookmark lookup. Because we are not returning a selective result anymore and the query is over the tipping point. As you can see from this simple example, accurate statistics are needed by the hash join operator to make sure that the whole operation stays in memory. In this SQL Server Quickie you have seen the basic concepts behind the hash join in SQL Server. A hash join is used in SQL Server in an execution plan if you are joining big tables together that are not indexed very well. Internally the hash join uses a hash table to store the output from the build phase. This hash table needs a memory grant which can also introduce various side effects. If the memory grant was calculated too small, the hash join has to spill over to DampDB, which will decrease the performance of your query. In the next SQL Server Quickie, we will have a more detailed look on the merge join, the last of the three physical join operators supported by SQL Server. Stay tuned!